After taking an early lead in Death Valley Saturday, Auburn's 17-game winning streak was snapped by the Tigers of Clemson. Auburn hosts Florida Atlantic Saturday before starting an absolutely brutal October schedule. Do you see the Tigers making the bowl this season? Well, Chris Deal, that's not the only thing that might have snapped. If you guys didn't see the eagle bumping into the press box, I oh, think yes. that may have affected the way they're playing. <laughs> yeah. But on a more realistic note, I see the Tigers definitely making it to a bowl game. I don't see any question in that. But the problem is I don't think the Auburn Tigers are going to be as happy because they're not going to be in the big bowl that they were in last year. And I think that's a little bit of a letdown. But I think they definitely have a chance of going to a bowl game, especially they're hosting Florida Atlantic this weekend, which is a team that UF blew out of the water. So I think this is going to be a good way for the Tigers to get back on their streak of – hoping to get into a bowl game. So I think this game can only be beneficial and a big W for them. Well, I agree, but I think they get there by the skin of their teeth. I see no better than 6-6 six and six for Auburn this year, possibly a berth in the BVVA uh, Compass Bowl. I see wins against Florida, Atlantic, Ole Miss, Samford, and then either South Carolina or Georgia. Uh, they still have the high-powered offense. Don't forget about that. They were driving to get within seven of Clemson with about nine and a half left when Cody Sensabaugh just made an incredible interception, picked off Barrett Trotter inside the five. Uh, so, I mean, they get, into the, they get into the end zone on that one. Completely different story. Uh, it's not a bad team, just kind of hard on their luck yeah, right now. Who would have thought we would see Auburn looking at possibly six and six or seven and five going into the season? Just shows how much they miss Cam now, who's in the NFL. Definitely. In a very physical game that went right down to the fourth quarter, number one Oklahoma defeated number five Florida State. With the win in such a highly ranked opponent's home so far away from Norman, have the Sooners proved they deserve their number one ranking? Um, they deserve it, actually, because they have players who want it. I mean, look at Kenny Stills. Even though he has been suspended, he still didn't let that discourage him or mentally cripple him. I mean, he was pacing for his chance. He positioned himself at the end zone. He saw his chance. I mean, did you guys actually see how he ex extended his body to make sure that he was able to catch the 37-yard pass in the fourth quarter. I mean, that was the tiebreaker right there. So some people say, hey, they want ugly, but moments like those are exactly the type of moments you need to make it all the way in the championship. I'm so glad you mentioned the word ugly because I'll say this. Have you ever heard the phrase, just win, baby? <laughs> um, Landry, seriously, Land Landry Jones' touchdown pass to skills there will probably be shown in New York when he gets an invite to the Heisman Trophy ceremony. This reminds me a lot of the 2002 Ohio State Buckeyes who behind not Terrell Pryor, not Troy Smith, but Craig Krenzel, of all people, continued to squeak out small Sorry, victory after very close victory week after week and ended up winning the O2 National Championship. Great win for Oklahoma. I agree with you, even though I did pick Florida State, it's a little discouraging to see Oklahoma come out on top. Uh, moving forward, Syracuse and Pittsburgh are reportedly set to join the ACC as the 13th and 14th members of the conference. Okay. UConn and Rutgers are also reportedly pursuing membership with the conference. Are we slowly heading toward that four 16-team super conferences that are such a topic of discussion? Sadly, Jonathan, I think that's what's going to happen. I mean. I don't know how I feel about all these conferences expanding, the ACC, the SEC, because I know in my own childhood, I would look back and be like, oh, these are the, this is the SEC, this is the ACC. And I don't really like how teams are changing because I think those conferences were set and everyone that's burned into their brain, this team's in the SEC, this team's in the ACC. So I really think diehard ACC, SEC fans are really going to struggle with different teams coming into, as you can say, their conference. I agree with you, and uh, it, it does sure seem like we're heading towards the super conferences. You're talking about the Big, big East and Big 12 possibly merging, Conference USA, Mountain West. The thing I don't like is the geographical aspect of it. You've got Baylor possibly looking at the Big East, TCU already in the Big East. There's nothing Eastern about those teams. I think the Big East commissioner hit the nail on the head when he said those three words, greed, money, and football, easily. Absolutely. Yes. But we'll see what happens. You never know. Things could change. The tides could turn. But personally, I hope that we keep with the ACC and the SEC and no more teams coming in. I'm going to be selfish. <laughs> That's all the time we have for this edition of the Sports Zone. Please join us again next week as we discuss Mississippi State's trip to Athens. Plus, we'll tell you if Florida's ready to challenge the face against Alabama when they come into town. Please follow. SU Sports Zone, and feel free to leave any questions, comments, or topics you would like for us to discuss. 
Also, if you've missed an episode, please go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash MSU Sports Zone. Thank you for watching and please join us again next week on the Sports Zone.